Hello everybody, my name is Paul Ainsworth, talking to you from Mahe in Padstow. Mahe is our chef's table and development kitchen, and today I'm going to be cooking a bubble and squeak scotch egg with a beautiful curry and chilli mayonnaise, all in aid of 12 Days to Christmas, which is a Cornwall Air Ambulance at Fun. Uh, yeah, while we're waiting for Rachel to join us, I shall sort of talk you through the dish. It's really easy. If some of you are cooking along, I promise I'll go at a nice pace. And uh, yeah, I'll talk you through the ingredients. I think Rachel's now live with us. Is that right? I am. Paul, how are you doing? The stars are aligning. Yes, you, uh, you're in my ears. Look I'm at that. Seamless. Look at that. Look at that. Totally seamless. How are you, Rachel? I am very, very good. Thank you, Paul. Merry Christmas to you and everyone down in Padstow. Are you all all right? We are. We're very good. Thank you, Rachel. And Merry Christmas to you. So, yeah, I've just told uh, everyone while we were waiting for you what we're cooking. We're doing a bubble and squeak scotch egg uh, mm, for this wonderful, nice. um, you know, fundraiser for Cornwall Air Ambulance and me being it's day seven. Officially day seven on Cornwall Air Ambulance uh, advent calendar. And we are very, very excited because obviously this is the 12 days of Christmas all made possible from you guys and our sponsor, Karen Dickens, for the uh, Committee Boats UK and the Caribbean. And this is really exciting, actually, Paul, because we, the last time we saw you was at the Corinthia last year, where with yours and Emma's help and multiple sponsors, we raised over a quarter of a million pounds for the Cornwall Air Ambulance Charity, which was superb, wasn't it? It was a great night. It was absolutely fantastic. It's um, a real career high for me um, and Emma. You know, we we were super proud to be ambassadors and we were as passionate and as motivated as everyone. You know, it wasn't just us. So many people contributed to raising a quarter of a million pounds um, and to see the helicopter arrive. And yeah, that night of the Corinthia will be with me forever. It was such a special night. And uh yeah, and all thanks to people like, you know, Jackie Stanley, because it was Jackie Stanley that got myself and Emma involved. And yeah, it we're was. just super proud um, to be a part of it and, and you know, and raise awareness for, you know, such a special cause. Because I don't think, you know, everybody knows that, you know, it's completely self-funded. And as we all know, a helicopter is a very expensive thing and a very expensive thing to run. Very, it really is. And I think without everybody's... Um, energy, passion, um, and support for this amazing charity. Um, uh, we, we, we are so going to keep them flying, and we're so determined to do that. So, Paul, thank you so much. For all of those that have joined just now, obviously, um, please do go to cornwellerambulancetrust.org. If you go to the Just Giving page for the cornwellerambulancetrust.org, you can put your donations in. So please do that while we have joined Paul here today. So tell me, this is that now. This is really, really special. Slightly uh, a bit of a fabulous topic uh, that you are cooking today, Paul. T tell us what you're. Tell us what you're cooking up. <laughs> <laughs> well, firstly, firstly, I want to say honestly, it is not for that reason. But we will talk about it no. that reason, and um, I can assure you, this is going to be proper substantial. Uh, but this recipe uh -huh. was born got it in on there. Boxing Day. And I'm just going to start off some onions and then I'll, exp I'll explain to you why it was born on Boxing Day and it will make sense. Now, whenever I'm cooking recipes like this, you know, for cook-alongs, Instagram, Saturday Kitchen, anything that's, you know, that is the public are going to take part in or, or view, it has to be interesting, it has to be relatable, and it has to be something that people can try at home and, you know, not do. So... I think what everybody's going to relate to, and by the way, you can't see her, but I've got this incredible camera woman, director, sound, everything called Chloe. So Chloe, if we could just show everybody what's in there. So this is basically called the Boxing Day Scotch Egg. So growing up as a kid, my dad would always, on Boxing Day, take all of the veg, roast potatoes, with cabbage, Brussels sprouts, carrots, parsnips, swede, and he would make a wonderful bubble and squeak with a fried egg on top. So it gave me the idea of like, well, hang on a second. What about if you could take all of those vegetables left over from Boxing Day? I'm sure you've all got this. It doesn't have to be this veg. Whatever you've got. 
and turn it into a bubble and squeak scotch egg. So that was where the idea came from. So quickly, I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here. I've got an onion, which I'm just cooking without colour. I'm going to add a little bit of butter out pan. Um, I put a little pinch of salt in there and we've got some garlic in there, two cloves. Next, we're going to come over to here. So if we just come over here, please, um, Chloe. And super, super simple. In your food, food processor at home, add in some of your roast potatoes, some of your sprouts, some of your cabbage. And again, use whatever you've got. That's the whole point to this. It's just giving you a great alternative for Boxing Day. You know, Boxing yeah. Day, I'm going to let you know something here. I prefer Boxing Day to Christmas Day. I absolutely love that whole <laughs> meats, pickles, scotch eggs. Like, I just love, I am a bit of a kind of nibbly, nibbly bits person as opposed to the main right. dinner. Now just absolutely. turn it on, all right? This will do all the work. And the only tip, if you just come in and have a look in here, Chloe, the only tip I'll give you is you don't want to break it down too much, all right? So we're just going to put that on for about another three or four seconds. Now you can see that loads of texture, absolutely spot on. Now we're going to put that, I've got one here, you can see I've got already on. And we're just going to put that into our pan. I'm going to add a little bit of butter. Now you might ask, well, why, why do this? Because obviously you've already cooked that veg. This is creating layers of flavor. So basically look at it like this. These vegetables, they've gone a bit sleepy. They were beautiful on Christmas day. Then you put them into the fridge and they kind of just sort of settle down. We want to get them vibrant again, get loads of flavor. And by doing that, that's why we're adding them to a really, really nice cooked down onion and getting loads and loads of flavor back in there. Right, next, into this, we're just gonna add a little bit of butter, okay? And this will make sense. This yeah. is optional, but I assure you is absolutely delicious. Just add in about a pinch of curry powder. Use whatever one you want. I'm nice. using the Korma one there, so quite mild, quite fragrant, but really, really delicious. And that's going to go so beautiful with the sausage and the egg. And it's also going to pick up on that lovely mayonnaise. And that there is basically it. That's all you do until you've got that. So this one here, wow. I've just let cool yeah. down, Rachel. All right. Packed full of flavor. All right. So this now, can be just very quick, Paul. So for anyone who's recreating their versions, which I know they are at home, yeah. Um, because they can recreate their version, obviously. And we would like you to email that in, guys, your versions of it. Um, and obviously, they can win a, a copy, a signed copy um, by you of the Padstow. So do So anything, any leftovers, can you put in pretty much whatever you like in there by your Christmas pudding? Um, you could put all your veg. in there, right? All, all your, your, your okay, favourite cool. veg. Like, you wow. know... Yesterday for roast dinner, I had some, um, some beautiful braised red cabbage. Um, now, I love braised red cabbage. If you're having yeah. braised red cabbage, you know, not everyone's going to have that, but some people might. You know, it, at the end of the day, it's what you love. So whatever your household, whatever you and your family love on Christmas Day, you're obviously going to have leftovers. You put them in the fridge, and this is just a brilliant way of utilising them. Now, something else, it's okay. like, right, well, what's the binding agent? So we're still going to use sausage meat but i wanted to show you this because i know it sounds simple but sometimes when you see sausage meat you might think oh okay well you know how do you get to that stage or you know like getting it from the butchers don't if you've got sausages i'm sure you're gonna have a full english breakfast at some point over christmas because yeah. it's about completely and utterly overindulging so just with your sausages just snip the end and it's as easy as this okay yeah and now just push the sausage meat out of both ends of the sausage, like that. And that, basically, is going to be your binding agent. So okay. we're just... So you see, it's just so simple to do. And again, it's all ingredients that people have at home. Fantastic. We're just getting, so just getting our... That's fantastic. So lots of leftovers, but then including the sausage. And also... So you've also used like a, I think I, from looking at the recipe, so this sort of 
loves sort of this you like the sort of sweet chili and tobacco is that right yeah tabasco tabasco so, even yeah <laughs> but do you know not what? tobacco <laughs> i have been to a restaurant where i have had tobacco and chocolate so you weren't you weren't too far off there rachel i wasn't okay. i'm actually i'm looking i'm looking at my notes and i'm like that does actually say tabasco so fantastic so that goes in as well yeah wow. so that's going in there as well now you can see here, I mean, the smell is, is, is amazing. So the curry powder, the oils are coming out, the curry powder, you're cooking that down. You've got your lovely, lovely veg in there. Now, now at this point, you want to add your herbs. So I've got parsley and sage. Great, great, especially yeah. sage. Beautiful, beautiful, roasty, lovely Christmassy flavors. Now, I'm just going to chop that nice and fine. Okay. Wow. Now, again, I'm just running my knife there through, through once. The board smells incredible. I bet little it does. tip, sometimes when you see this going on, going through the herbs, no need, all right? Get that straight in there. It's fine enough, because what's going to happen is, like garlic, like our spices, herbs contain oils. That's where, that's where that flavor is. And what happens is, you don't want that flavor being bashed into the chopping board. You want it into your pan. So just stir that round. And now you can see why I'm cooking this kind of bubbling squeak mixture because I'm just getting absolute maximum flavor out of our beautiful vegetables. So I'm just going to do a quick recap for you, Rachel. Thank you. So here we've got our sausage meat that we've just squeezed out of our sausages. Okay, I've got three sausages worth in there. In our pan, we started off with half an onion that was basically cooked without color in a little bit of olive oil. I seasoned it with a little bit of salt. I then took my leftover Boxing Day vegetables and blitzed them so they still have plenty of texture, as you can see. Uh, and then I added a little bit of curry powder and two cloves of garlic. I've then added a little bit of butter and I've just cooked it until I've got this lovely roasted bubble and squeak kind of mix. Now this is the exact same mix in this pan. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room and I'm just going to add that now into my sausage. Wow. This is yummy. Right. The, the only frustrating thing about IGTV, of course, is that I can't smell it. So I can't be with you, but we are so, I'm so going to, well, yeah, we're all with you on this. This is great. Yeah. Are we, are we is, is it clear so far? Are we happy very, so far? Right. Very. We are making notes behind me. Now. <laughs> Now, chili, I think this is a bit of a chef thing, but I think also people watching lots of cooking programs are realizing just how um, brilliant condiments are. We shouldn't look at condiments as like, you know, you're, you know, you're a Philistine if you like ketchup. Ketchup is a wonderful thing. Brown sauce is a wonderful Ooh, thing. Okay. Mayonnaise, all of these things, sriracha, Tabasco. Like, don't turn your nose up at these things. They absolutely are brilliant little flavor bombs, flavor enhancers that everybody's got in their cupboard. So again, I'm gonna use sweet chili and Tabasco, but if you had sriracha or you wanted to add a little bit of like ketchup into it, what it's giving you is acidity. It's giving you zing and it's just kind of giving a, another extra dimension, another extra flavor to your dish. So we're just gonna add in a little bit of sweet chili. All right, that's Yummy. gonna give us a nice bit of warmth, nice bit of sweetness with all that savoriness. And Tabasco is actually, my mum is from the Seychelles and my mum likes really, really kind of hot food as we were growing up as kids. And um, she always used to have like bought scotch eggs and would have a little bit of Tabasco on them. And I don't know, that smell just reminds me of like being around um, the dinner table. Quick yeah. funny story or not so funny. Um, some of you, Michelle, I think Michelle was at the Crimfield. Michelle is my sister. Um, there's a seven year gap between me and my sister. Um, I think she was about one years old and I would have been eight and I unscrewed the tobacco, the Tabasco lid and let, let her basically suck on the top of it like a dummy. Oh, and God. it was meant to be a bit of fun. I was eight years old. Um, it was that kind oh. of brother sister thing. Um, my mum and dad weren't there and yeah, she absolutely screamed, which I then panicked and was asking her to just please stop, please stop crying. And yeah, I got into a lot of trouble. Oh but, no. Yeah. Cause that's quite strong. Especially if you're down. It's, it's, a, great, it's a great story now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Good dinner table story. Yeah. You all have a laugh about it now. Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Right. So now you can just see in there, 
we have got bags of flavour. We're going to put a nice twist of pepper in there. Now, remember, everybody knows, obviously, I'm, you know, I'm so proud and such a big fan of everything we have here in Cornwall. Um, Philip Warren's Butchers is, you know, um, for me, just a, just a world-class institution that we have right here in Cornwall. And these are their sausages, which they call the Old Cornish, which is a recipe that they've always had. These ones are actually gluten-free. You would not know. They are absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. So remember, when you're buying a great sausage, a really good sausage, if there's a particular sausage you like at the supermarket or, you know, the local butchers that you have near you, then use that. But remember, it's packed full of flavour and it's going to be seasoned. So now if we just have a look in there, Chloe. All right. And there you have it. Job done. Job done. Right. Look at that. Job done. Okay. So I'm just going to place that there. Fantastic. And we're just going to move our pan here. Now, for, now you can use, if you want to use an all, like your ordinary hen's egg, no problem at all. But also, if you want to, if you want to use a um, quail egg, which I'm using, don't be put off by that. Quail eggs are everywhere now. They're in supermarkets, they're in farm shops, they're everywhere. And they're really, really nice because... Again, it's Boxing Day, and it just it just gives you that it just gives you that opportunity to kind of create that sort of alternative kind of dare I say the word snack substantial um, me, snack substantial yeah mm. mm -hmm. right so we've got that made I'm just going to wait for our water to to come up to the ball so you can see how quick everything comes together so while we're waiting for our water to come up the ball let's make our mayonnaise Fantastic. so here I've got some shop bought mayonnaise mm -hmm. if you're really really you know into your cooking and you want to make your own mayonnaise go for it but do not make it with olive oil or anything like that use like a nice neutral oil like a um, peanut oil a vegetable oil mm -hmm. because you want to get tons and tons of flavor from the um, seasonings which i'm about to show you right so again dead dead simple little tip make this at least two days um before because the curry and the oh. turmeric really take on like all of the flavor and also as well if you're using like say like a shop bought mayonnaise it's going to be pasteurized eggs so yeah. it'll really really last and it will stay lovely um in your fridge fantastic so good tip i'm about to show you something incredible here are you ready i'm ready i'm about to as a man i'm going to multitask i'm going to make mayonnaise and good boil Lord. quail eggs at the same time okay let's do it as a man. on camera let's do this Let's see if you can, let's see if we can, let's see if we can achieve right. that. <laughs> Chloe, two minutes, two minutes, 20. All right. We all got that. And that is got the it. perfect cooking time for your quail eggs. All right. So okay. we're just going to, best way to do it actually, is get something like this. We call this in the kitchen, like a spider, but just a, a slotted spoon, anything like that. So you're getting your eggs all in at the same time. All right. Okay. So eggs go in. Okay, and we go. Two minutes, 20. 20. And then I've got a little bowl of ice there ready for, when they, ready for when they come out. While that's happening, we've got a little pinch of turmeric. Okay, so a pinch of okay. turmeric. And two pinches of that same curry powder. I'm using a corner one that we put into our bubble and squeak mix. I'm going to use some Tabasco. So constantly picking up those flavours so there's some nice continuity between everything we're doing. Some sweet chilli. Okay, and this time I'm going to take a lemon. Can I just say, Pete, you are, so you are multitasking very well. Do you know what? <laughs> I'm very proud of myself. Because well. <laughs> normally Fair I don't. Way. Okay, so I'll put a little bit of lemon zest in there. Right? And now a little bit of lemon juice. Like that. Now just gently mix around. I promise you, this is the most incredible curry mayonnaise. Like, absolutely oh, yeah. delicious. 
right? And you can see that wonderful color wow. it goes. And just to go, just to sort of explain just very briefly what I was talking about earlier, that's delicious now. You will be blown away by how the flavors of the turmeric and the curry powder really develop over a couple of days. Even the color will become more vibrant and it just does so well from just sitting there. So that's our curry mayonnaise done. So you can see that everything just kind of happens really, really, really quickly. We've got 17 seconds left on our quail eggs. And then I'm going to show you how to wrap a beautiful, beautiful scotch egg, which is our next bit of the next bit of the recipe. Yeah. Are we clear so far? Is there any questions that you'd like me to answer? Is there any? Uh... Well, there we are. Ooh, there's our there's timer. There's the buzzer. No, I mean this is very exciting for those obviously that have just joined us. Obviously, um, if obviously when you're going to donate your money, please go to the Just Giving page for the Cornwall Air Ambulance Trust dot org. And for those of you watching. Paul doing this incredible bubble and squeak scotch egg, which I honestly, I'm totally mesmerized by because I can, I just can't make them. I can't master it. So hopefully I will be able to. Um, please do send four images. Um, it's on day seven of the calendar for Cornwall Air Ambulance. So you can send in your image to win the signed book. So we are back with you. We are back with you here, Paul. Very excited. I realize I've been, uh, I've obviously been talking. We, we are through we are through quite a main part of the recipe now. So uh, if there's anything you'd like oh, to great. Can I, ask can me I, or oh, questions brilliant. like that, no, you, this uh, would be you're, more, you're more than welcome to. Well, I mean, you, I know obviously you've been filming. I know because you've been incredibly busy. So I, and I know you're, you obviously, you uh, and your wife are fantastic ambassadors for the Cornwall Air Ambulance with a huge passion for Cornwall. And the amazing thing is, which I have to tell, a lot of our clients come and dine with you in Cornwall. All your restaurants are back open, am I right? Number six. Absolutely. The townhouse, the, the Mariners, and obviously, yeah. and also um, Cafe Reggiano, am I right? Because I've pronounced that right, haven't I, Reggiano, am I right? Yeah, you absolutely have, yeah. So it's actually, it's probably, it's probably Rajano, but it's known to everybody that comes down here as Reggiano. It's, it's, we, we call it Cafe Reggiano. It's actually owned by... Uh, a Spanish gentleman in the 70s uh, who have done a you know, fantastic job there, Stanley Reggiano, uh, as he was known. So, uh, yeah, you pronounced that absolutely spot on. Ah, very good. Yeah, then you're back open, which must be super exciting. <laughs> Amazing restaurant. Um, and obviously, and eaten that by so many people um, across the country that come especially down to see it. And some of the views, I have to say, on your Instagram stories, in the morning when I'm getting on my tube train in smoky London, I look at your stories overlooking Padstow and the beautiful, and I kid you not, I mean, that, that sets me off for the day. It's so beautiful down there. You've got some beautiful spots for your restaurants. You really have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, no, it's, it's a wonderful location. It's a, it's a beautiful part of the world. Um, you know, certainly like, uh, as you say, you know, the Mariners is probably, you know, the, the sort of the location, you know, we were, you know, we were so excited when we got that, when we got yeah. that site, because, you know, it's just, it just makes you very happy, happy and very sort of special. And, you know, where we are now, you know, this is a dream, a development space, a space where we can think and create and move away from the kitchen and just be able to sort of immerse ourselves yeah. completely in, in development and creativity without having the sort of day-to-day -day services going on around us. Um, as you mentioned, Cafe yeah, Reggiano, which... you know, that's a real institution. Opened in 1974 by Stanley Reggiano, as with me and many others, just sort of really resonates with everybody is that sort of place that people would come on holiday and, you know, and those memories of Cornwall. And I know that Reggiano's is a big part of people's holiday. So, um, yeah, yeah and then finally Padstow Townhouse, which is in the old part of Padstow, really exactly. quiet, really sort of idyllic. And that's, um, you know, and that's our bedrooms, um, which we, that's which we're right. sort of super proud of. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a nice sort of collection of businesses. We work extremely hard at them. We never take anything for granted. And, you know, we just want people to come to any one of these places these establishments and just leave yeah. there you know yeah. like blown away and you know whether it's a scotch egg at the mariners or 
a sourdough pizza at you know um, Cafe Reggiano or you know the the sort of the food and the style and the the theatre and experience of what we do at number six you know the ambition yeah. and the drive is the same for all of the businesses um you know, as, and including the bedroom so absolutely and actually that's a really good point because for the um amazing for the auction corbelair ambulance dot auction you people can actually come down because you very kindly included dinner dinner for two at number six in padstow haven't you as part of the auction i have Yes, I have. Yeah, yes. with with pleasure. Fantastic. Yep, yeah, we've all right. bid on that. Right, you ready for actually. some magic? Yeah, let's do the magic. Right, I'm ready. So, Rachel, I know this is the bit that you um you, you want to learn and and you know <laughs> I do. struggle with, right? So, mm -hmm. as simple as that. I've just taken some mix. Make these okay. as you know as big or as small. If you're using a bigger egg, just you've got to you've got to get your mix quite sort of thin around the outside because you've got to get these things cooked. Remember that sausage meat is raw. So I've just yeah. gently patted that out, out in my hand. Can you see that clearly? I can, we can, yeah. Okay. Now I've just got a peeled quail egg. The quail eggs are dead easy to peel. Literally just put them on, the, put them on your bench, give them a little tap and they'll, slow, they'll just basically shatter all around and peel it from like basically the tip of the egg. It basically will go like a helter skelter all the way to the bottom till you've got this lovely egg. Now just turn it over and just literally close it. Go, go right in, just close it up like that. Okay? Okay. Keeping the egg it. in the center, right? Now, yeah. let gravity do its work. Uh, this may look silly, but like literally just kind of, just like that. <gasps> and what happens is okay. that's just centering the egg right in the middle. Roll oh, it Paul, around. I can fit. You did that so easily, but you know what? I can see like a hundred other people right now having a bit of fun with that. Take like that. 45 in my kitchen. It will be, okay, good. And look at that. Beautiful. That's okay. amazing. Right. Got it. Yeah. You happy with that? Yeah, we're yeah, good. Yeah, very, very right. well, good. That's so amazing. next stage. So we'll move our mix over to here. Now we're going to get to what we call the panay stage. Again, super simple. So Chloe, if you just come in on these ingredients here. I've just got some egg whites. All right dessert making you know keep your egg whites and if you've got your egg whites kind of think oh what can i use them for apart from meringue they're brilliant as a as a coating now you might see some pannings where they've got flour and they've got egg yolks in it we don't do that you know like the flour is just adding a, another layer of stodginess and the yolk is going to add a flavor that we don't need we just want something very neutral so we've just got our whites here and we've just basically broken them down with a whisk drop your egg in Okay, wow. coat it all over like that. Now with this hand, I'm keeping this hand nice and dry. Just gonna get any excess off. And now I'm going to, into something again, which is. It's quite. And when it's got a nice texture to it, when it fries, it goes extra crispy. So I'm just gonna wash my hands. Okay. Wow. All right. This is looking good. Are we good I'm so far? I'm hungry now. Very. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just what very just, good. Something I'm just gonna quickly go go to is. I'm just gonna put my my heat back on. What I wanted to do today was. Sometimes when you see these demonstrations, people are like, well, I don't have a deep fat fryer. Now, deep fat fryers yeah. are, you know, they're, they're not expensive. You could get them on Amazon or somewhere like that, you know, and you can, you can get a decent one for 30 pounds. But if you haven't got a deep fat fryer, which a lot of people don't, I'm going to do it exactly the same way as you would at home. All I'd say to you is, is just make sure that it's the pan is to the back of the stove. You need to get this oil to a hot temperature, about 180 degrees. And... That's all we've done. So we've got our pan, we've got our oil in there, just enough to submerge the egg. And we've also got a digital probe, again, from a kitchen shop, really, really inexpensive. And we're just gonna pop it in there and we want our oil to be around 100, 170, 180. So I'm just gonna turn that up, all right? Because we are not far off. So yet yeah, we're almost, 
We're looking good. Yeah, almost there. Fantastic. Okay. Brilliant. So, I'll do the I'll do the pan a exercise again. So just to go through it one more time while that we're wait, waiting for our while oil we're to waiting come up. for the oil. So like just, just like that. And just roll a quick question while you're doing that, Paul. I mean, you you've um you've always have you always worked in hospitality? Because if I'm right, um you your family ran a, a guest house, didn't they? Is that how it kind of all started? Yeah, that, exa exactly that. Um, I was kind of born born into um hospitality um and yeah and have very fond memories of it you know like our home was you know was the business and you know my dad was a you know he was a real real stickler for making me understand you know that you know nothing comes for free in this world and you've got to you've got to earn it and you've got to get out there and if you want something you've got to earn it and you know the value of money and all of those kind of things which you know i'm thankful and grateful for that I sort of had that and I suppose growing up in that environment you know was some people might look at it and think well you know work and home but my mum and dad always did a great job of keeping that really separate but it it's now I look back on it and just with such fond memories and to sort of be in that kind of environment and you know it meant that we always sat around the table together and, and sort of had dinner you know even if it was sort of breakfast in the morning but I suppose that work ethic combined with, you know, even if we answered the telephone, like, do you remember when people used to answer the telephone yeah, and say I their do. telephone number? Whereas yeah. we, you know, oh, I yeah. had to say, you know, hello, Bitten Park, welcome to, welcome to Bitten Park Guest House, Paul speaking, how can I help? And, and if I took a book in, he would, I'd like really want to please him by taking a book in as well and stuff like that. So, so yeah, it's, um, it. it was, it was an amazing um, upbringing and just something, you know, that I'm incredibly, yeah. you know, proud to, to sort of Absolutely. have as part of my heritage. And, and that's kind of what got me into the kitchen. Absolutely. And also just talking about books, Paul. Now, I'm a, I'm a bit of a fan of being in the kitchen cooking. Um, but I, I, have, I, I yeah. do have quite a few books. Um, now, you obviously have been in, you feature in loads of cookery books, loads. But what yeah. I would like on my shelf is your book. Tell me when that's going to happen, Paul. Come on. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you. It's very kind of you. Um, yeah, look, it's, 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 we, we, you know, we've had, we've had loads of conversations, you know, about it with, you know, various publishers and, um, you know, over the years. And I suppose the, the honest truth is, is that one book I promise you that will, you know, will happen one day is the number six cookbook. But, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, at the, t I feel at the very beginning of what we're, creating and what we're doing you know at number six and there's plenty of time for that book you know to to sort of happen um you know there's ideas of maybe recording you know the the last 15 years and stuff and sort of creating a series of of like number six books but then the other route is you know like the book that full of recipes that people can try at home and um and that's something else i'd love to do but i suppose it's just making sure that it's right and i feel super passionate about it and I'm not just adding Absolutely. something to a you know an already sort of you know popular market shall we say yeah I know and I do agree is that, with that, is, that I, is that a good enough reason it it's a it's a fairly good reason Paul I do get that however can I just say on behalf of multiple people that follow you and adore you there is only one Paul Ainsworth by the way so uh, so I would like to see that book on uh, on the on the shelf and down here in Piccadilly and Waterstones because I think it would definitely be a hot favorite on everyone's uh, Christmas list so maybe next year you can just whip one up that would maybe. be um Superb. Maybe, maybe next year. Thank you. Thank you. They do and take I'll, a while. No Rachel, pressure. You, Rachel, you can write the forward. Brilliant. There you go. You see? Easy. We'll get it all nipped up in the bud. And also, now you've worked with um, a number of incredible, incredible um, chefs. And obviously your first break was with the very fabulous and late um, Gary Rhodes, who sadly passed away earlier this year. What, yeah. what was that like, Paul? That must have been an incredible experience. Yeah, it, it, it was phenomenal. Um, you know, dishes like this, I feel, come from that time, you know, with Gary. Uh, I, I sort of paid a real tribute to him on my, you know, on my Instagram. And I suppose what would you probably did. sum Gary up is is that I was at Catering College in Southampton and my lecturer was God, godfather to his children. Uh, he, rang, he rang the college, said he was opening a restaurant in Pimlico in London and was looking for chefs. 
I was just coming to the end of my um, MDQ level three and jumped at the opportunity. You know, I, I needed that break. Um, and, but as you know, Rachel, in, in, you know, with London, the rents and deposits and six weeks up front and, and a month's rent um, is, is astronomical. And it is, you know, especially when you're, especially when you're 18 years old. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Gary, Gary put me up in the hotel in Dolphin Square for three months until I'd saved up enough money to get my first deposit together for, um, it, I, I can't say flat, it was a bed sit. Um, <laughs> Which and, in London you know, is, yeah, um, is was, a palace, of course. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, you know, he was, he was brilliant like that. And Gary was very comfortable. He, he knew exactly what he was, you know. He was, we might not see him for, say, three months, because uh, he was always filming. But then when we did see him, he was like, first one in, last one out. Um, and yeah. I, I suppose that kind of everything he stood for then is so normal now, which for me makes him such a pioneer. He's so, so ahead of his time in terms of, you know, British sort of, you know, a few ingredients done really, really well. Um, and just kind of like, you know, if something's on the plate, it has to be there for a reason and not just lots of, pomp and ceremony and all of that so yeah it was it was a phenomenal phenomenal time to work for someone like that and yeah, to learn wow. from him it was brilliant absolutely yeah, brilliant. what an what an experience and and um and so for those of you guys that are just joining us obviously and listening to paul about his career and history obviously look at those oh they're perfect and i don't let me just i'll put it over here just just hang on I don't think, i'll go in close just listen <laughs> oh look at that that's amazing so we're going to pop them we're going to pop them on our tray like that okay. and while i just put the mayonnaise i'm just going to put that have your oven on and just pop them in your oven just to keep them warm just for a couple of minutes okay. and now we're gonna that's fantastic plate up. did they look good oh this is exciting they honestly they look they look like they could have been done by a michelin star chef so um <laughs> look at that <laughs> years of practice guys for those of you who have just joined or will be watching this obviously please do donate we are nearly at we have a two hundred thousand pound target which paul ainsworth is helping us get to i can see donations coming in so the cornwall air ambulance trust.org go to the just giving page that's where you can donate your money let's hit this target so that we can keep the Cornwall Am Ambulance flying because that is why we are here. Also, just while Paul is plating up, um, donations, you can also buy on there the most amazing virtual gifts. Everyone's doing quite a lot of virtual at the moment. Virtual gifts, virtual Christmas cards, all the money raised is going um, to, the, to the charity. All thanks to our new ambassador, Cornwall Air Ambulance's new ambassador, Karen Dickens for the committee votes UK and the Caribbean. And she is joining, obviously, Paul and his wife, Emma, um, as ambassadors um, for this incredible charity. So please, please, please give really generously so that we can hit this amazing target. The auction, just so you know, guys, we know that Paul also has donated dinner for two at his incredible number six restaurant down in Padstow. It's on until the auction is live. We've got the most amazing baubles from some of our artists. And also we've got um, it's on until 10 p.m on the 12th of December. So please get bidding. Um, you, will have to, you will have to outbid me though on the dinner for two at Paul Ainsworth because I've just got my colleague to currently bid while you're going online because I so want to nail this um, bubble and squeak uh, egg, a scotch egg. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Just so you know. Right, here we go. Here we go. So just got a plate, we put our curry mayonnaise in the middle, and like I say, this is just for me, got Boxing Day written all, all over, over it. It, it has. So you just want a kind of like a serrated knife like that. Okay. Just straight down the middle. And there you have. where we can see the inside oh we're with you we're back with you paul we lost you for are you a back second. yeah i lost you there 
Right, you ready? We're back. We're okay, back. I'll show you again. Yeah. I'll show you again. Ready? You see that? Okay. <gasps> it's perfection. I saw it. That's amazing. Okay. So, little twist of pepper oh, boxing on those day eggs. Treat. Now, just to clear up as well, I actually bumped into the guy this morning that put this on Twitter. I saw it at the, at the weekend about that it, not only have we got the substantial meal debate, but I saw there was a bit of a debate going on about hard boiled or soft boiled. As you can see for me, for me, right in the middle. So that you, you almost like the yolk is a bit more like, is a bit more kind of like gel like. For me, I yeah. love it like that. Love um, it. And then we're just going to put a little pinch of sea salt. And that is it. It is as simple as just literally going in. Oh, wow. Right. <laughs> Isn't Honestly, good? you get like the curry, you get all of those lovely roasted vegetables that you do in Bubble and Squeak. That wow. delicious egg, but that curry mayonnaise in with it. But then your ears, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that crunching sound that it made, but it's just so crispy. I and can, because I've got you thing. right in my ear, so it's good. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 it's good, um, it's good. I'm, I just can't the, taste it. Fab. That is a little alternative to do on Boxing Day. Bubbling sweet it. scotch eggs with a curry mayonnaise. Thank you for watching. Oh, honestly, Paul, that is absolutely, you have smashed it, literally. Absolutely love it. And I can't tell you how many people are going to be doing this. Apart from you do have to do the mayonnaise, possibly Christmas Eve, right? So that you can put that in the fridge so that you get that lovely extra flavour and colouring, right? Yeah, and that's just a little tip. Look, if you forget to do no, it like and that. you want to do it and you want to do it on and, and you do it on Boxing Day, it will still be delicious, like... Yeah, it was. It'll still be lovely, but uh, it gives. It's just warm, it. you know. The turmeric's giving you nice warm, that lovely curry powder, and look, all things that you've got, you know, left over at home. At home, fantastic. Yeah, no, I absolutely love that. Now we do have a question um, yes. for you. A couple more. Now Karen yep. Dickens, obviously, our fabulous ambassador. Without without her, the twelve days of Christmas wouldn't be happening. So a huge thank you. To her she has a, a, a couple of questions for you so um she would like to know what you're eating for today and i would like to know while we wait just, just lost you there rachel back. yep i lost you there sorry that, that, that's live tv for you i can't hear her it was to, it was to ask you if you can hear me it was to ask you what you do for Christmas Day. But in true IGTV fashion, we are very authentic with our signal. Can, I can hear a bit. Can you hear me now? Oh, telephone that signal. Now? Rachel, can you hear me? I can hear you. You're back. I think you were asking me, I think Karen wanted to ask me what I'm... What I'm cooking on Christmas Day, well, um, I can't remember Christmas where I've not cooked. Um, it's it's one, one day of the year where I really, really enjoy it because I, I just love that kind of meal, all the vegetables, all the meat. But this year, and this is no plug, this is the honest truth, I will be um, having Christmas lunch at the Mariners. Um, it's the first time we've opened the pub on Christmas oh. Day. Um, we're going to have like... People be able, being able to come downstairs for a drink and wish each other Merry Christmas like they did last year. Um, but this year we're going to do that and open the second 